And so, another sad day for the British motorcycle industry. Just as we thought another famous British motorcycle brand was about to rise from the ashes, I'm sure the news has reached most of you now that Norton Motorcycles has gone into receivership. Now, this news broke over the weekend, and the story that I first heard was that this was the result of a 300 thousand pounds tax bill that Norton hadn't paid which seemed odd because yeah 300,000 pounds is an awful lot of money but when it comes to a manufacturer like Norton it seemed odd that the receivers had been called in over what in the greater scheme of things is only a small amount of money things just didn't seem to add up initially it was Sam at Motown that originally alerted me to what was happening, and he sent me a link to a Visor Down article that had just been published. Now, this publication from Visor Down was basically um, a jumping up and down saying, I told you so, sort of an article, centering around another article that they'd published back in March 2019. They'd done some research and discovered that Company's House had issued Norton with a winding up order, which is basically a sort yourself out, get your house in order, or we'll shut you down sort of a warning. And that is basically the only information that was in this Visor Down article. It, the rest was centred around how all the other motorcycle press and you know the motorcycling public had attacked them for this slur on Norton's name. Like I said, the article was more about Visor Down than Norton itself. There wasn't a great deal of information in there. Now, one thing that I did pick up on in this article, there was a lot of criticism towards Stuart Garner, who is, of course, or was, the managing director of Norton. Mainly centred around criticism of his public drum banging, the lavish and expensive soirees that he'd organised for the public and for the motorcycling press. Which I suppose is fair comment, you know, you don't spend money unnecessarily like that if your company is in dire straits. There was also some criticism levelled at a well-known motorcycle newspaper. From what I can remember, they didn't sort of name them directly, but it was obvious to me who they were talking about, Motorcycle News. With a sort of a suggestion that there had been false reporting on Norton's current situation, or recent situation. Now, it's a little bit difficult to sort the wheat from the chaff when, you know, the information is so vague and it's portrayed in such broad terms. But I sort of gained the opinion that what Visor Down were trying to say is that perhaps there'd been some jiggery-pokery going on and that MCN had taken some inducement in order to portray a more rosy picture of Norton's situation than, you know, than you to be the case. Now, if that is the case, it wouldn't surprise me, but of course, we also have to take into account that it may just be some industry rivalry uh, rising to the surface here. Now, I am running out of Norton footage, so I'm just going to have to play some footage that I took at the NEC last year, rather than just continuing to loop the same footage. Now, I'm busier than ever. I, yesterday, I was filming for the Practical Reef Keeping channel and, you know, also editing it to get it up for Monday evening. So, I haven't had an exhaustive amount of time to both research and prepare for this video. There may well be, in fact, I'm sure there will be an awful lot of information to come out of the woodwork. But certainly, what I've been able to find out so far, things have not been, you know, as we, the bike buying public, thought it might have been for quite some time. In fact, almost from the day that Stuart Garner bought the rights to Norton. That was back in 2008. And Garner, a showman by all accounts, pledged to bring this historic mark back to the forefront of the world's motorcycling consciousness. 
Now, The Guardian has reported that back in 2012, hundreds of hard-working people had been persuaded to remove their pension pots from conventional pension schemes and hand the money over to Norton. A total of some £14 million. This money was then locked up for five years by Garner, who invested it all into Norton shares. Now, when the five-year lock-in period had expired, certain pension holders tried to get the money back, and they say that Garner ignored the requests. Garner himself purportedly saying that he had no idea that it had to be paid back after five years and that he thought he had longer to pay. It all seems a bit fishy, but he seems to have got away with this. And he denied all knowledge of the fact that this money had been raised for the company fraudulently. And in fact, a guy that had been responsible for raising these funds in the first place was convicted of fraud back in 2018. There are also reports by The Guardian that millions of pounds in government loans backed by ministerial endorsements were given to Norton, which I suppose only served to increase Norton's credibility to other creditors. And then there are payments from customers, deposits for bikes, in some cases even full payments for bikes that they've never received. Yesterday morning I was watching a video made by a guy, I can't remember his name, I think he rides a Yamaha. Back in 2018 he'd put a 500 deposit down on one of the new Norton Atlas models. And at the time he was told that he would be able to take delivery of this bike in spring 2019, which has obviously now well and truly come and gone. Bearing in mind, he published this video a few days before the news actually broke. The incredible thing is that he received an invitation, I think it was last December, so, you know, only talking a month or so ago, from Norton Motorcycles, asking him if he would like to attend uh, another one of Stuart Garner's soirees, aimed at procuring even more investment for Norton. I think basically what they were asking was for customers who would put deposits down on bikes or paid for them and hadn't got them, they were asking them if they would like to invest some more money in the company. In retrospect, that is incredible. You couldn't make it up. Now, the vlogger that I'm referring to um, is no fool, obviously. I think the main reason he went down to this soiree was to see if he could get any news on when he was going to get his bike. Obviously, he's not going to get his bike now. But he did state that a couple of days after this, this meeting, this soiree, he'd received an email from Norton saying that it didn't matter anymore because they'd found a new investor. There does also seem to be another case that Norton was involved in where a company that they had a relationship with um, committed a £5 million tax fraud and Norton was for a while dragged into the investigation. Looking back we seem to just have a history of Norton taking investment money, deposits and payments for bikes but not really building any bikes. And then of course we've got the poor workers at the Norton factory, about a hundred of them I believe who come Monday morning found they didn't have a job anymore and I dare say I probably owed wages. The whole thing is a complete and unbelievable mess. Now, I have been given some figures by a third party. I know some of them are right, but I can't guarantee all of them are right, but this seems to be the score for Norton so far. As far as the unpaid bills and money owed by Norton goes. Of course, we have, for a start, the £300,000 in tax money owed to the government. The £14 million that I've already mentioned in pension funds which can't be repaid. £5 million to US customers who have paid for bikes or paid deposits which are now not going to be supplied to them. £16 million owed to UK customers for the same deposits and payments for bikes that they haven't received. £20 million to Japanese customers. 
5 million pounds owed to China for development and manufacture of engines, 4 million pounds in UK grants, and a 750,000 pounds loan to a UK bank. That is an awful lot of money. And I think it's pretty obvious that Stuart Garner is not going to come back from that one. I'm sure there's probably going to be a lot more to come out of the woodwork as time goes on. It's a real shame, but this seems to be the sort of thing that we've seen from the UK bike industry for the last 50 or 60 years. And I've got to admit, I was completely taken in. Uh, come last November, I was convinced that Norton was going to be a major player in the future. I was wrong. As for the future of Norton, the Norton name, the Norton brand, we can only hope that some investor is willing to come in and pick up the pieces. It would appear there is a very viable factory. We've also got some very tasty and viable motorcycle models for which most of the development work has been done. I can't see an investor coming from the UK or the US. It's more than likely going to be an Asian investor if one does appear. I would hazard a guess probably from China. It's not ideal, but at the end of the day, it's the best thing that could possibly happen at the moment. And it would be better than just watching the Norton name and the development work that's been done so far disappear. Now, if anyone has additional information to add to what I've said today, or maybe even some corrections if information that I've gleaned is not 100% correct, please feel free to leave a comment in the comments section, but please keep it respectful and polite. Once again, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I really do appreciate your support. I think we're just coming up to 24,000 subscribers or we may have even reached it by the time this video is published. I hope you've found this video enjoyable, maybe not enjoyable, but useful. If you have, please leave a like and if you're not already a subscriber, subscribe to the channel. Be sure to hit the notification button so that you're alerted every time I upload a video. If you didn't like this video, please feel free to leave a dislike, it's all the same to me. I'll be back again on Friday, so until then, please ride safely, and I'll see you soon.